Okay, I'm going to call the um, Frontier Regional part of the joint meeting um, to order. It is 610. 610. 609. Okay. And I will call the um, Union 38 meeting to order. 611. 610. We're good. Um, okay, so first thing we're going to do is approve the Frontier Regional minute meetings from April 7. They were in your packet. You had a chance to read them. I did so far. I'm good. Is everybody good? Can I have a motion? Motion. Can I have a second? I'll second. Judy and Phil. Okay. All those in favor? Frontier? All those abstain? One, One abstention, no. two abstentions. Okay, Kenny. And I will entertain a motion on the minutes of April 7, 2016. So moved. Second. In case Trevor. 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 And any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, is there any public comment tonight from our public? We actually have a public. <laughs> uh, just as a, a little note, the um, cameramen, they are new, for us anyways. Names? Um, ben. Ben. Joe. And Joe. Okay, so they have asked that when you do speak, you speak up so that it can be caught by the mics. So I told them I would pass that on to everyone. Okay, so public comment, anything? No, we're good. Okay, so we have no unfinished business. And our new business is the relocation of the central office in the policy ACAB sexual harassment and ACA non-discrimination on the basis of sex. So I'm gonna turn it over to our new superintendent, Dr. Lynn Carey, who is at her first joint meeting uh, so we told her we'd be nice. Hey, uh, Doctor? You got to take that in a second? Oh, you're <laughs> yeah. I did want to say we should all be welcoming Dr. Carey to the first joint meeting. And uh, so welcome. that's all I just wanted welcome. to add. Could we welcome her? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, good afternoon. right along. I've sent the PowerPoint to um, the office folks that are the ones that are going to be uh, really impacted by this. So, there we go. So, this is going to the the understanding that I have from when I came was that there had been a, uh, a study done by the public, um, the Department of Public Health, done on the building at Christian Lane and Waitley. And it came back um, with some uh, recommendations. Those recommendations came up to about $62,000. However, there were other things to consider when we looked at that. And a couple of them was the boiler, the heating system, which is about 100 years old. Um, there's going to have to be some abatement down there. There's a lot of abatement down there and necessary with the uh, files. There is no fire alarm system. Uh, there, there's, we need to improve the egress. It's not a fire safe building. It is not an ADA compliant building. We would need to put an elevator in to bring it up to code. Uh, electrical and lighting upgrades needed to be done, plumbing, and um, office space renovation. We really wanted to do that. 
So the total um, in the envelope and the insulation, and the total of all of that came up to roughly about $450,000, give or take. Uh, it was $450,000. Do we need to do it all today? No, but there are things like fire safety, ADA compliance, those kinds of things really needed to be looked at. At the time, my understanding when I came on board was that the uh, school committee felt that at that point it might be prudent to look at other, um, other places, other facilities for our central office because sooner or later that furnace boiler is going to uh, give up and replacing that there's a lot of asbestos we, we have mice we have bats we we have all kinds of things going on there so the decision was made to look elsewhere so I came on board and I uh, we had had Marty had given me uh, some information on two different places that we were looking at. So our goal is to provide the district central office with a safe and a convenient and a cost effective facility. Uh, and we looked at the overall cost of moving and staying, the uh, optimal location and how best to manage the feelings about relocation. People have been working in the Christian Lane building some for 20 years. And we're, we're talking about something that's that's pretty hard. That's just a really hard thing to think about moving uh, when you've been in a place for so long and you are doing your job effectively and efficiently and now you're going to have to move all of that somewhere else and start all over again. Um, and also, so we looked at three locations. We looked at staying in Christian Lane. There's 5,600 square feet there. Some of it's subterranean and some of it is not there's like the out of district school, uh, out, of, out, of, out of school time people, their office floods, it's, it's not good. Uh, our early childhood coordinators downstairs, it's just not great. We have the Sandy Lane um, facility that uh, is in Whateley, it's 2,600 square feet. And the Frontier Regional School at this point, which is 4,500 square feet. So we really, really looked at all of them. And I really tried to have a discerning eye and to do the best that I can by everyone. So here are the details on Sandy Lane. And this came specifically from the file I got from Marty. This was the agreement. So the, um, the rental agreement is $8 per square foot for 2,600 square feet. It's $20,000 annually just to pay the rent plus the Amortized. Amortized construction cost and the common area maintenance charges, which are unknown. Common area meaning the lighting, the heat, the, the, the kinds of things that we would use. Would they charge us for plowing? That sort of thing. Um, the area in Sandy Lane is a large open space. It's a warehouse at this point, and it would require flooring walls and electrical data. There also wouldn't be a ceiling. It would all be open. Uh, there's no overhead separation of space. The entire area would be open for shared overhead heating and lighting. Uh, my uh, concern is for lack of confidentiality, but my major concern was for the um, accounting people. We have four accounting folks and there was no um, outdoor light. They would be relying on uh, fluorescent light. Uh, Waitley will consider bor borrowing or bonding the funds to build and renovate with a matching loan uh, term with the written lease agreement. And they offered us the use of meeting spaces at no additional cost, beautiful facilities, um, with their first priority going to their town boards and their meetings. Uh, we would be responsible for the construction and build out of the lease space amortized over the life of the lease. So. Um, I'm sorry. This is what it looks like. So this is, what you see here in yellow is the town offices. You come into Waitley and this is the window and this is the town offices. So all of this would belong to them. This here is a bank of windows, that's the parking area. What we would have here is there is a three car garage and this area is put aside for skims. We're not sure what the position is, whether they're going to move there or not, but all of this was 
put aside for scans. So what we, as in our office, would end up in is 2,600 square feet in here. Now right now, it's a cement floor, warehouse, just a blank space. So we would have to put in the walls. These would be um, not walls going to the ceiling. These would be like partitions. Uh, these three offices, we'd have to put in windows for them, and we'd be putting in a door. Uh, this would be for Patty, Bob Decker, and... Bob Decker gets an office? I'm, I'm not getting a job. Bob Lesko no. and, Ka and, uh, and Karen, our special ed person. Over here would be, we would have a door here, people would come in here, this is the reception. This would be Kim uh, McCarthy, this would be me, superintendent, and then my uh, assistant Donna Hathaway and Diana would be here. The uh, bookkeepers or the accounting folks, as I like to call them, would be in here with no outside light. They would be in these uh, cubicles with no outside light. Now, there are these ADA bathrooms, which is great because that's what we need. There's also these bathrooms. Waitley has also said we could use this conference room, which is a very nice one, and we could have this kitchen for our lunches. We could use the microwave and the kitchen and all that. But when I looked at it um, with Marty, all I could see was a very kind of a dark, uninviting environment for the people that, uh, that would be working um, day and night with numbers. And uh, so that's what I looked at there. The cost involved in moving there, $20,000 a year. Now currently, it's costing us anywhere between twenty-four dollars to $28,000 to maintain the Christian Lane building. So right now we're paying about $28,000 a year. Give or take, I'm gonna go from 20 to 28, roughly. I think last year it was 27 and change, 27.5, to keep Christian Lane going. But this would be $20,000 a year for the life of the time that we would be leasing. Um, we don't really know what the common area maintenance would be. We don't know yet. They, we don't know because we haven't used it. We would move our own phone and computer service. We don't have a real estimate on how much that would cost. The construction and the build out would be 43000 without furniture. Furniture would be about 15000 and the moving would be about 5000 So one time it would be $84,000 to move would be about four to six weeks once we keep going, but it's also going to cost $20,000 a year on top of that $84,000. Plus, Plus CAM, that's true, plus whatever utilities we use. So then we looked over here at uh, the Frontier Regional School Building. My very first day on the job, 8 o'clock in the morning, had a meeting, got right to work. So the building, the these are some of the, the things that we took into consideration. The building belongs to the district. It belongs to all four towns. It belongs to all of us. We don't need to lease or rent any spot, any site. It's a larger site. It's 4,500 square feet versus the 2,600 square feet. And the cost for the operation of the central office will be determined by I think we were going to delete that one. Yeah. Um, there wouldn't be. Yeah. There really wouldn't be because you're paying for it anyway. Um, and, and so we didn't take that out. As we looked over this about 12 times, too. But anyhow, um, they, we're all paying for it because it's ours. It's our community. It's all of our uh, towns. The classrooms and offices just will leave some limited modifications to convert to office space. We've already got approval of the Deerfield. Uh, building, um, yes, and he said, yeah, it'd be fine. And we also will have a meeting in a break room in this building as well. So Can I just clarify, when we're saying the cost of the central office, they would already be assessed in the Frontier Regional Assessment, so there would not, we don't need to break it out because it would just go to the towns through the assessment process. So this is the second floor of the high school. So we don't need to look at that right now. Middle and high school. Middle. 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 Middle school. 
where it says middle school hallway. Yeah, I wrote that too. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Well, what's going to happen? What's it going to look like from the 30,000 foot view? And so I, I put in this map. This right now are these three classrooms we've actually are able to move. Uh, one of them is uh, language arts, one of them was the social studies, and I think one of them was speech and resource. So we were able to move those. And the beauty was we were able to move those up here to be in the middle school hallway. We didn't move middle school kids elsewhere. We're actually moving them closer to the community where they, where they are in school. Um, there were two computer labs here that we did move. One of them, well, we haven't done it because we haven't gotten approval, but one of those computer labs is moving to the high school, and I don't know where, but this, again, is another separation between middle and high school kids because high school kids were in this middle school hallway. And the other computer lab is going somewhere in here where these kids have... They Wait, can you tell me when you jump in? I can jump in. Darius, please. Right. <laughs> because those no. are their specials. It's fine. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of moving parts. But basically, when um, you know Marty asked me months ago to you know put a, you know put something together, what it would look like, um, and as we're looking at it more of a long term rather than a short term thing, the idea was this right here is called our C wing. It's really a hallway right outside here with computer labs that you've seen. Um, those are not those classrooms aren't used every day for every period. And so the idea is to move the whole chunk of middle school up to these labs pull computer labs out. Um, right now, we're mostly going, we're not having the stations of the old, I don't want to call it old fashioned, but the old computer room styles where the whole classroom comes in and sits at a computer. I mean, we're growing so Chromebook now and so laptop based that um, it was okay to cut out one of them and we're going to put it into the um, high school wing where it's mostly high school classes anyways. Um, also, Nikki Russell's room, which is right <clears throat> when you come in the front building, the old drafting room is already set up for a computer lab. We're just going to convert that to a computer lab. So we're eliminating one solid computer lab. Um, right now, the other computer labs are underutilized because people are just getting their homebooks um, when they're using for, you know, for uh, writing papers and whatnot. So keep going. Keep going. Um, the people being moved was, was correct, and we're just moving in the longer stretch here. I've already spoken to the teachers and such. And there's no, not a lot of pushback there in the sense of they understand and um, there aren't, there aren't worse rooms, actually. I think they're probably nice rooms. Uh, sorry. Um, they were also looking at, they were going down here. Currently, it's Bob Lesko's office, the IT office, and the home ec um, room. The home ec room was used for um, speech and language. Um, we're just simply moving into an empty room that's down here. And then um, the tech office is actually going to move to a high school full classroom that we have vacant. They actually asked for more space prior to this whole move to begin with because of the amount of materials that they're fixing and storage and they needed a room you know with the server to be sit three people and they're all together in a room with a server um, not the most pleasant place so they're actually moving to they're moving to right here and um, the other computer labs will be right there um, and then Sarah Mitchell's office is right here and she's actually going to move down closer to me in my office area um, she's down mine with the wing building anyways for six out of the seven hours of the day anyway so it just made sense um, so that was an, that has really impact the whole mac room is a split room actually it's right here's the split room um, so this as they said we moved this side out but we are holding on to the ability to have interior home ec classes and, and, and there's a kind of teacher's office space in the middle that we're giving up as well giving up. so this room is where they kind of cook there's a lot of cooking classes but here it was more storage they were you know and in the old, not the old days, but they used to do a lot more with sewing and a lot more crafting and this and that, and now they, they just haven't had those kinds of opportunities necessary. Um, so, but we are keeping foods. Foods will still be part of. And the kitchen, of course, is right here, so our staff hopefully will be able to go and buy food from the school kitchen and the, uh, the salad bar and, and all of that. So that's what the 30,000 foot view looks like. But why, why Frontier Regional? I mean, really, let's look at it. Number one, the building belongs to the district. Again, it's ours. All the rooms would have natural light. To me, that's very important, and it's important for the people that, that work 
in front of computers all day that are working with numbers. I want them to have natural light. They have a lot of it now. I don't want them to go without it. We're investing in our own real estate. It's ours. We're not building and buying and, and taking a warehouse and, and kind of converting it uh, so that we can rent it and lease it. It's, it's ours. It's our real estate. We're not, we're not going to be paying annual payments. Um, this is something that I believe firmly in, not everybody does, but we're an educational organization and, and we, me personally, I don't want to be in an isolated building. I want to be able to walk outside and go to a, um, a sporting match or a football game. I want to be able to walk over to Deerfield Elementary and see what's going on. I want to be near students. I, I want to eat in the cafeteria. I want, I want to be visible. I want to be accessible, not only to parents, board members, and community members, but also to kids. You know, I still will be spending time in Sunderland and Waitley and Conway, but it really takes a lot of burden if I'm here uh, with kids. Uh, the community would have more access. We would be more visible. The facility, uh, has the rooms available. We did need to move three rooms up to the middle school hallway. And there's not really any major construction involved. And, and shortly I'll have Bob Lesko talk about that. Um, so this is really a deeper, a closer look at just the rooms that we're talking about. So right <coughs> now we're looking at a security door here. One of the things is, is whenever you're in a building with students, even though, even a central office. We really should be in a situation where it's locked and you need to come in, you need to buzz, you need to explain who you are and what you're doing, but, but most importantly with children. So the, the security door would be here. Bob um, Lesko would outfit the security door. And again, it's just double doors. It's the same thing that they have over at the front of the building but it would only be for central office business. So if mom comes and says, look, I got Johnny's ice skates, you know, we would say, well, you need to go to the front office for the high school. This is the central office. So we would have um, Rhonda here, um, you know, taking care of business as the receptionist. And this meeting room, which was the sewing room, this would be our meeting room for large meetings. We, I have cabinet meetings. We have eight, 18 meetings principals meetings, um, any kind of meeting. Uh, Karen would have special ed meetings. This would be a meeting room or, and a break room where the, uh, the, the office workers would be able to sit down somewhere outside of their office area and microwave and cook and eat and take a break. Um, this would be Patty's office. Right now it's an IT office. This would be my office. Uh, it's Bob Lesko's office right now. And then we come to these rooms. These rooms will be kind of separated from kids. Um, the students wouldn't be going through this hallway. Uh, right here, this is all sun. You know, this is all sun. And there's windows here. So when we looked at this a little closer, we looked at putting, again, it's, it's not perfect. It's not optimal. But it's a, it's, I think it's a little bit bigger um, than what we have now we would still have the four accounting people in there. But they would have their own special corners of the room, and I'll show you how uh, we will divide that and give them their own privacy. So essentially, they will have their own offices. Uh, this over here right now would be special ed with uh, Karen and uh, Diana and Kim, the early elementary uh, person. This would be our four bookkeepers or uh, accounting folks. Over here is out of school time people. They're in the cellar now. Um, I can tell you Janet was thrilled to hear that we weren't leaving them behind. This is Bob, Bob Lesko and um, MJ would be there and MJ would be working um, with Bob, with Patty and with uh, Louise. So that's, that's sort of what it looks like right now. There's kind of room for everyone. The students, there's no, there's no door here. This is a door to a science room, but the students would be using this stairway, but they would not be coming up through here. So that's, uh, and they would, be, they would be locked. We also have a little coffee clutch thing here. It's open, it's like a t you know, terrarium, and we thought we'd have a little table. And 
Um, how much is it going to cost to move to Frontier Regional? Hey, when we uh, talked with um, Keep it one minute. Bob Lesko came up, he did a lot of work and he came up with these costs. Electrical upgrades about 1800 The air conditioning is, is the biggest cost. The air conditioning, it looks like, you know, we would need maybe six, maybe five uh, units. And they're the, the newer kind of more efficient units. They're up there. Um, I said, can't we just get window units? But that's not secure. So these, these are secure. I'm always trying to cut the cost. We would need to replace a window that's in the IT room now, which has one of those old air conditioners just wouldn't shoved up there. We have to change that. The security entrance with a buzzer and camera, 2000 The workstations, give or take 25000 I I'm hoping it won't be that high. I really am. Data drops and uh, the building rekey and the bells, we want to make sure that we don't get the bells ringing while we're working, especially for our um, our people. The phone, uh, window treatments, painting, signage, eh, five thousand. The phone <coughs> upgrade is very important, and I'll tell you why. Um, there's something going on with the high school phones. I'm not sure. I'm going to have Bob tell you. But if we get in this new voice-operated uh, internet. Uh, system for 8,500 it will allow expansion to the middle and the high school and then the uh, ventilator upgrades 2400 and the movers about 5,000 so it's a one-time cost um, 93,000 compared to paying 80 or whatever the, the, to the total was for Sandy Lane and then 20,000 plus cam over years or uh, staying where we are where we're paying about 27000 to to stay where we are. This would be a one-time cost and we would pay back within four years. Um, Bob is here and he'll answer any questions after I finish. Um, these are, this is an idea of what these units cost, I mean what they look like. They're, they're used, they're meant for two, uh, the drops would come in through. And, but everybody would have their own private space. And then they would a, be able to customize their space. Some people wanted to bring you know, their own like tables so that they could have you know, places spread out. Well, everybody would have a corner of a room and they would be able to make it themselves, but they would also have all this privacy. They wouldn't be kind of facing each other. These are used, they're from Conklin Furniture in Holyoke. And my understanding is they come from office buildings from New York City and they're refurbished. Uh, the timeline, the planning and design we've been working on, I, I wanted to present it to you, to the school committee. It, hopefully that a decision would be made. Um, the classrooms would be emptied if we get the go ahead. Uh, we'd be able to make sure the high school is, is done. And then October and November, we would, you know, get into the uh, preparing, getting, setting up the phone system and all of that. And then um, I'm thinking during Christmas break, the movers would move the files, computers, et cetera, to the new location. And we would be open for business on January 2nd. So it's, it's not happening, you know, there's no rush. We don't need to be impulsive and jump into it. We, you know, take our time. And uh, Christian Lane, well, what's going to happen to Christian Lane? Well, we're going to keep it heated and maintained uh, for minimal use. And the, the reason why is we have valleys and valleys and valleys of records from way back, way back before you and I were all <coughs> born, way back. We have a lot of records. The state is very clear on things that we need to keep. We're also needing to go through the process of weeding through what we don't need. But right now, if anyone goes down in that cellar, it's incredible. It's just incredible what's down there. We need to get an abatement contractor to clean the dust and the mold from the boxes, bring the stuff upstairs so we can actually see it and get rid of a lot of it, but actually see it and we need to keep that facility going so that we have these, these, this records, these records. Uh, and 
but there's still the risk of boiler failure and uh, we'll be aware of that but if something like that happens we might be able to uh, come up with plan B maybe get some kind of electrical baseboard just to keep the uh, the temperature to a certain degree so that things don't totally freeze so this is where um, I'm done but I know that there's a lot of questions so I would like to um, ask you for questions and um, Bob Patty various any one of us um, ask us questions because that's a lot of information they, they, they wouldn't be this middle school students would not be entering where they enter now anymore so some of that stuff would still have to be worked out right now I don't see a problem them entering the building from the middle school entrance because we started 745 and um, central office as a whole doesn't really get operating until about 830. I'm so, just talking thinking about it in terms of security and being able to pick so right now so right now at the beginning of our school day um, we open up for those who don't know this we open up both entrances as buses drop off here high school goes this way middle school goes this way middle school then goes down to the cafeteria where they're supervised to start off their day when the bell rings they then go to class um, so there is some and we were just talking about this prior to me there is some disruption from start of school day you know at 7:45, they get dismissed from the cafeteria they walk down here they go up the main corridor staircase to the second floor to the other thing there is a side staircase but you can't move 200 students up that so they, you know they kind of split between the two yeah, that's the staircase there. Um, so, so coming in in the morning, you know, they, they, they dribble in. It's not like a big herd coming in. You'll get a lot. Of, probably, fifty percent of our kids get dropped off, um, and the rest uh, coming in by bus. And so they would, you know, trickle in. It's not. I don't think it's that loud or that disruptive at the beginning of the day. End of the day, there will be a herd going out, um, especially when they're finishing in um, the middle school. And you will have a three-minute herd going out of the building, but they go quickly. It's amazing. Thing. Coming it's in amazing. slowly, leaving quickly. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing how quickly they can all get out of the building. Um, if that is your question, you understand what I'm saying? Right now, I'm not looking at changing any of the motions of the students, but that's something that if it does come up, we can look at how we administer it. But dur during the day, if a parent wanted to have business to do with one of the pick up a kid or do anything they'd have to go through the senior high entrance yeah. they do that now anyways right now there's a sign on the door that says between blank and blank please use other entrance okay, okay. Um, what capacity is left in the high school after this move in terms of if you need a, a new classroom so that there's enrollment bump in the future so that is the that is a good question in the sense of um, we do looking at projected enrollments right now we are going to have um, between the next year's fifth grade class uh, sixth grade class and we forward we probably have just over 100 in each class and then it drops down however we just saw a spike in Sunderland so you know I'm only running off the numbers that I, I do know um, the capacity in the high school we do lose that extra those extra rooms and um, right now we are um, we are not at capacity, and so it's, it is uh, very easy to do this. Um, if right now in the high school we have probably two classrooms that are underutilized, that's not including computer labs where there are no assigned classes to. Um, so right now um, there's still a computer lab 210 is down there, and then the drafting room is not assigned. This classroom is used one period a day. Um, on a third floor, there's another class that's used one period a day, and this period in this classroom is um, used as an open lab. So there are classrooms that are under are, are under respect, but um, I don't see it as a problem, especially in the high school. You know, um, the same thing with the middle school. We'd be okay if we had a huge bump. That would be going back to numbers. Of, you know, right now we're at 720. I mean, we're at 620. We got up to you know 720 and such. We would have to have another meeting to discuss. What? what we would move and how we would move it and you know, what that would be. And is there room on the property for an addition if you if you did find yourself in that spot? I have no idea. You know what I mean? Since we have that whole courtyard I imagine right. you could build into. Yeah. Um, you know, that's you know, but again I would I have no idea of zoning and all the other stuff. That's a Bob if Bob would have any idea, yeah. but I'm sure you could. My you guess can. is that there there wouldn't be you know the cost would be the issue. It right. wouldn't be the zoning or the okay. there's plenty of space I right think. All right. This over here too, when we look at these classes here, 
these are our life skills and our, um, is it our ABA, our Horizons problem, Karen? Is that our ABA. Uh, in ABA. our program? Oh, just ABA. So this is our, our ABA and life skills. So it's a minimal amount of students, but they need a lot of space. But they certainly aren't um, going to interfere with anything at all. David? Yeah, um, obviously you guys all put a lot of work into this, which is great and appreciate it and all that. Uh, but I just want to ask a couple of questions. So um, in terms of the middle school experience, um, are we improving it through this process, or are we in any way taking away from it? Um, I Sometimes it seems like middle schools you know, are overlooked a little bit. We all love our elementary school. We focus on them. We've got our young kids. Break in middle school, and then we always focus on the high school. This one in particular, obviously, you're in charge of two schools, so it has that element to it, too. Um, we're talking about three seventh grade classrooms, I think you said, that are going to move upstairs. Um, so let me explain where, where people are at. Maybe that'll help yeah, that you, yeah. right? So I'm going to see if this works because it'll be cool if it does. Um, currently, no, that's not going to work. Currently, this is our radius seventh grade classroom. Okay, this is a middle school um, um, special ed classroom. Yeah. All right, and no, I'm sorry. This is the uh, was used as the the fifth uh, um, English classroom and social studies classroom, and this was middle school special ed. So this was already part of middle school. Okay, across the way, this is the um, the, the eighth grade special ed classroom, and so what I what I've done in the, in in the moves, which I didn't really go into depth is is I move this special ed classroom over to here okay and move this special ed classroom from down here up here and then put English and social studies so instead of having a couple classes on one floor of seventh grade and a couple classes on the second floor of seventh grade you actually have to sell a whole seventh grade in one wing so, so all of seventh grade is, is leaving all except which I couldn't do is move this science lab is there a science lab so there's one science lab here and then half of the seventh grade is the science lab up here so it's kind of split. They have to go downstairs because the labs, unless you want to spend $60,000 to build a new lab, you know, they really had to, you know. So there was some split already. There was um, some split already. And so now. It's not like um, a seventh grade campus there with those. Sort they're of actually, there's, they're all more in one spot. And so um, I don't think it's going to change the middle school experience. It's one of the reasons why, you know, when I'm, my, the, the plan is to blow out those two computer labs. And if you walk into them, you're like, oh, you're really going to rip all this furniture out and that kind of stuff. But my thought is that. You do, you do it, you make it right, you make it the whole wing, yeah. or instead of piecemealing people, because there is another plan of piecemealing part of seventh grade here, and then maybe if you move seventh grade, you know, or eighth grade class down to the high school, and I was like, no, I want to rip out all those classes and make this the whole wing. So in essence, they're, when a teacher steps in the hall during transition period, you know, besides the kids going downstairs to Ms. Ferrer's room um, for seventh grade science, um, they're, they're all going to be there. So. So the fact that you're saying it's fragmented, is it possibly fragmented? I think it's fragmented less, actually. They can get away with less now because they'll be <laughs> more right, right. concentrated. Um, so essentially, you're having, essentially you're having the general ed middle school pretty much all on the second floor now. Because around the corner now, you have, this is all this is eighth grade classes, um, seventh grade, eighth grade shared, um, uh, special ed classroom, eighth grade English, eighth grade math, um, seventh grade math, so they're already, so it's kind of, they're all on the same floor instead of the amount of up and down. So teachers can step out of rooms and actually, you know, talk to each other. Is there, are there windows on that northern side there of, of that second floor? Where every, every room's every, 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 the nice thing about this building, there's only a couple rooms in the whole building. The, uh, yeah. the other added, um, for me, the other added uh, plus is that teachers will communicate more because they'll be closer, they'll be next door to each other. It's easier to go two doors down to say, you know, Johnny, did he do his thing for you? Because this is what, as it is, as opposed to going downstairs and, and that kind of thing. So the uh, PLC, the, the professional, uh, having your colleagues next to you, I think is uh, a, a bonus. Is, is there a oh, I'm sorry, Lynn had her hand up. Go ahead, finish what you're doing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and just curious, in terms of like the total square footage that we're imagining being used for central office school, how does that compare with the square footage that's being used at the, um, you know, that place, Christian Lane? Christian Lane. Yeah, it, but your second side has the number. Yeah, it's, um, it's almost uh, we, 
1,100 less. Yeah, uh, it's 1,100. And some of that's subterranean. 1,100 square feet less than we currently utilize right now. But not Bob, using, not counting the basement. Not counting the basement. We, use, the basement. we use 5,600 square feet of the office on the sec on the on the floor on the main floor, uh, and we'd have to reduce that down to 4,500 square feet, plus take two offices out of the basement. So we're going to be downsizing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be in less space. Yes. Yeah. But a large, large portion of what's being used in Christian Lane that adds is. Um, they have a very large, like it's a double classroom, and they use that for um, lunch and breaks and cafeteria. There are the copy machines. One of the things we talked about, they do have the copy machines there. So one of the things that we talked about, uh, there would be a copy machine in this room. Uh, the break room would definitely be smaller in this building than it is in um, Christian Lane. But there'd be a copy machine here, there would be a copy machine here with the bookkeepers, and I'm not sure. Rhonda's if office? Here. Yeah, I'm thinking we put one in Rhonda's office. But like you also have an actual cafeteria to go to. Well, this so is your true. your room smaller, but you to buy go to the cafeteria. But not everybody's going to want to eat with the kids except me. Well, no, there's also... We don't I don't know, really there's do also a staff room off the cafeteria that's that's underutilized. Oh. So oh, technically, really? if you wanted to get away from each other, you could go mingle oh. with other adults. So exactly. Or you can sit with the kids. But you can always to, use some extra supervision. I just want to clarify, it's not just a break room at Christian Lane. That's our meeting room, and that's where, when we have large copy projects, that's our room that we have. So we, we do bit major mailings from so that we can spread out our copies when we're making mailings yeah. and things like that. I mean, it is a working room. It's not just a break room. Right. So, and then, and then we would have that same, um, the same room on the, uh, here, it's it's just not going to be um, quite as large. This room is probably two-thirds the size of the break room that they have now, or the meeting room or the copy room they have. Yes, oh, I'm not in charge. Uh, well, actually, Lynn, do you want to get rid of her? I've go? just got a couple quick questions. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you have a lot of meetings during the day. I know you've got them at nighttime, so I'm assuming you've got a lot during the day. Are these people going to have to come in through the main entrance, check in with the central office or main office, and then stumble bumble their way down to your office? Or is there an entrance that they can use? They come in this door, and they'll be, you know, they'll come in this door, Rhonda will let them in, and then they come to my office, <coughs> which is right here. And that's a security, okay? They have to tell Rhonda's going to be a security person. Right, so they, they buzz, they say hi, here. I'm, Lynn, I'm on the school board. I need. I'm here to see Lynn Carey, and then she buzzes you in. And if you don't know where I am, she'll walk you. But if you're a stranger, she will. So they can get to you easily without having to get through kids in the middle of change of classes and stuff. Absolutely not. They wouldn't go that way. And parking, is that going to be? In, you know, you've got what 17, 18 people there. 15 during the day. Is that going to be a problem for people coming to meet with you? So the parking for our office would be here along the um, tennis court. Tennis courts. Yeah. Okay. Visitors, there might be. We might put a couple of spots here for visitors. There's handicap and then. Lee, can you go back to the screen with the the big shot of our area? One of the issues that I can see, though, if they're not coming to see the superintendent and they're coming to see special ed. Rhonda is going to have to walk them down to the left and then all the way down that hallway because there will be students <coughs> in that hallway. So they cannot be unescorted right. to where the accounting offices is or the SPED offices so or in that situation. Or in that situation, Rhonda would call Karen and say, Karen, Mom, uh, Mom Jones is here. Did you want to meet her here or did you want her to come to your office? And then Karen can go and bring her in or Diana could I mean, I think the security brings up a good question because you know you, there is the possibility you walk the front door and they're dismissing from lunch. There's the possibility, but then you got to remember how many we parents we have coming in our building day in and day out who are going to special ed meetings, are going to team meetings, or going to um, whatever the meeting may be. So you know it's putting in policies. It is not a separate building. It's you know it's being immersed as part of Frontier, not being a separate. And so we're going to have to put in. Um, Procedures to in order to make that you know make it safe and successful. 
most of the buildings in Franklin County are a shared superintendent's office in a high school. There's a few of the buildings that are new enough where they have separate entrances and everything's separate, but if you kind of go through the, you're, you know, go through the hand of the different um, high schools in, in Franklin County, it's a shared space. So, um, I mean, I know I'm selling it. I'm selling some parts of this hard. I understand the logic behind it. I love having extra space and extra classrooms that aren't being used. It gives me some flexibility, but I also understand that this is the uh, this, is, this is the direction of the, where the, the facts are kind of pointing. So I'm giving it to you. This is not a new model. Orange, <coughs> Atha. I'm trying to think of all the high schools that I've been in. This is not a new model. Um, I mean, Smith Academy is the same way. You get buzzed and you have to walk down the hall in order to go to the office. Um, Mohawk's the same way. Mar has a separate entrance, but they're a newer building. Um, it's in it's in the middle school, but they built a new middle school and it's in the middle school. Um, and Mar 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 wait, 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 please wait. <laughs> Elaine, you next? It's you can okay, take John, you next. I, have, I, have, I have, like have a question, but it's you have a question? Oh, just I a do. brief question. Did you want a question? I do, but you can okay, stay John, on that train of thought. Are you good or do you wanna Well I'm still with the parking? You're still with parking, so Don, go ahead. How will this affect student and staff parking? I know that when I was here, there was a, a real problem with parking. Is this going to be an issue? Um, the issue is going to be I have to move some teachers to park in the back. And, and, and you know how that's going to go over. <laughs> um, so right now, um, if you kind of, it's the side of the building we're looking at, there's, um, there's probably about 20 spaces in the, um, where they kind of facing head to head with some handicap spaces. And then we have all the spaces in front of the um, tennis courts. Right now, it's split between some of the middle school staff park there because it's very convenient getting in the building. Um, and then we have the cafeteria staff and the rest of the student parking. When the students in the spring, when you get your juniors with a lot more licenses than um, they had at the beginning of the year, it's a full parking lot. And you probably have been in the middle of the day where they parked illegally and there's no roads. And I see my, my graduates over there laughing in the back we're filming. Um, they find wherever they can kind of park. And we've been somewhat lenient on that because we have a lot of school choice and we have to. You know, you don't have a parking spot where you say go home. Um, so we're going to have to work that out. The cafeteria staff um, may have to park in the back with the rest of the staff, and then also some of the middle school parking lots in the back there too. So that's one of the things administratively we'll have to take over, take care of. Rather, there might be some grumbling about that. In fact, I'll probably get more grumbling about that than I did about the classroom moves because the classroom moves are, um, you know, they're going from one decent classroom to another. In some cases, better because of um, better AC and whatnot. Um, but Good question, though. Bill? You can come up with it. Uh, just a brief comment on the, the, the committee that, uh, the, your building relocation committee, Marty, Marty had done a little survey of where the different superintendent's offices were, and there was only one in the county that was paying commercial rent. Um, and, that was, and that was Pioneer. If you've been reading the reporter this summer, that a number of articles came up featuring criticism of uh, the expense of that decision. <coughs> so that was the only comment. Lane. So, uh, but back to the Christian Lane building. Um, having gone through this, at, I ran a mental health clinic and we had rooms of records that have to be kept a long time. And we it took us a year and a half, but we scanned them all in. And then you get rid of the space and the storage. And you can even outsource the whole thing. That's more expensive, of course. But places come and will give you a one price for it all. And then you could be done with all of that storage. I mean, I, I suggest thinking about putting it in, building it into the next couple of years' budgets or something. Because I know that Westfield did it. It was about $10,000. But they do. They take the stuff. And they take it take off. It and, and they do it. Do it. Right. Um, I do know that with schools there are certain things that can't be digitally stored i mean we can digitally store them but we also need hard copies we need acid-free hard copies all of these minutes that go into the binders have to be on acid-free paper and it's it's, it's it, it, more expensive yes yeah. can i uh, add a comment there um because i think you bring up a great point away but when i look at this if we're going to be leaving Christian Lane. I think we're better off, we would be better off focusing on our current records and how to digitalize our current records. Yes. 
so that we have a process that we're going to continue because after seven years, those records, we can dump the financial records. Okay. So I think we should be planning on what's, a, what's our document solution now so, so that we don't keep adding mm -hmm. piles and piles. So that's and then started. in seven years, let that building pair out right. and, and, and shred. Right. But I think going forward, we focus on how are we going to keep them and let's have a process Absolutely. so that we don't keep adding to that old building. Right. You do and current. So eventually you do a current so you can right. stop the paper. Exactly. And then you go back. And because if we're still going to have the building and we're still going to leave the paper there, why are we going to worry about it? Right. As, as a new superintendent, I, I, I just want to say, um, number one, I want to point out that Rhonda has been down in that dirty cellar doing a ton of work, you know, taking out the things that can be taken out, and she's right. been working very hard. Number two, I need to go slow to go fast. I can't, I, I have to, you know, moving the office is so hard on these people anyway. And... Now I'm going to also say on top of that, we're going to make it easier because we're going to digitalize everything. Right. So, but she's got a point, and we are in the 21st century, but I need to go slow to go fast. Right. I, my job here is not to... Um, it's true. If you have moldy records or a mold problem, though, you may have do. to go faster than you really want to. Because true. Because yes, the only right. way to get rid of mold is... Yeah, and we're <laughs> looking at $5,000 for abatement just to get the records up to bring them up the stairs. Yeah. I don't want them upstairs now. Right. I don't, you know. No, but, keep them there yeah. contained, right? Um, but, and, and there's many, many records down there that we don't need. Yeah. But there are many that we do need. Oh, totally. We, I mean, you wouldn't even believe the mess that I inherited. It was just yeah. like a whatever. And it all got cleaned up. I mean, it took forever. Rhonda has years, been but. now, when she takes the boxes, she actually says can be destroyed after uh, January 2020 awesome. and and she has them all organized but that's just since she's been there I'm awesome. talking about the 1800s yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding but right it's sorry Judy can you Patty can you talk at all about the I don't think you can pinpoint it but can you estimate the cost to keep the building on simmer for seven years Oh, well, we were saying to keep it minimally, uh, we would probably need about three to $5,000 worth of utilities to keep that building just at, at, at temperature so that we're not bursting water pipes or anything like that. Um, so we would, we would have, well, and I, I, I've been trying, my, my, our insurance agent just had twins. <laughs> so he and, and his wife is the president of the company. So they've been on paternity leave. So I've been trying to get hold of him as to how much insurance we'd have to carry on a vacant building. Um, so but we don't want to leave it totally vacant, Patty. There'll we, be no people in it, Bob. So there'll be things in it, but there won't be know, people but, in it. But Bob, we're not leaving anybody. So we're leaving nobody behind. No, I have a follow-up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think, um, and my follow-up would be then, could we at a future joint committee meeting have a plan to create that sort of, pl that seven-year plan, if it's a seven-year plan or five-year plan, so that we can assess more accurately, not only the cost, but whether or not it's a reasonable time frame to address that. I mean, obviously there's the get-out costs, right? Right. And you've done a very good job of presenting those. But how do we get fully out of the building, like you were talking about? Is it a year and a half? Is it three years? Is it five years? Is it seven years? And what what can we expect to happen during those time frames? Right. So we'd have to look at that. Yeah. And what do we do with the building? building? And what happens to the building? We own that building, right? Right. We, we own, own the, we own the building. building. My understanding is we don't own the land. Right. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, we do. We do own the building. No, and land. the land. Building. And the land. The building is on. Some of it. Not but the land behind it. Yeah. No, not not all the land, really. But the town of Whaley has first right of refusal on on our on our property, and we have it on their property. So, so if we go to sell it to somebody, Whaley can match the price and own. Right, but like Lynn, like um, Jimmy had said, we can work that out at a different meeting. Yeah, that's, I would. That's yeah. a step going forward. That's not really. Yeah, more of a commitment to get there than. Um, Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, no, Frontier owns that building, I believe, right? Frontier yes. owns it. Right. Yes. So it's not even a joint committee decision. 
that we would have to decide going forward this frontier. Anybody else? Anything else done? Uh, on a separate note, leaving nobody behind, why is Louise Law not in this picture? Because Marty had made an arrangement prior to this that she would work in Waitley because Louise wanted out of the building immediately. But if we're moving into a new building, she's not in there? No. The thought was, with the previous superintendent, was that because Louise works with the elementary, she should be in an elementary school. I, um, if the time comes, depending on the um, you know, the future, next two three years, um, if we don't need that science lab or whatever, <coughs> or something else, um, I would definitely would like to have her back. She will be meeting. Um, she'll be coming. Right now, when I meet with her, I have to go to meet with her. But when she, uh, when I'm here in my office, she will come meet me, and I'm be meeting with her once a week at least. So, uh, because she's a very important part of what we do. So, uh, I, I, I don't see any. Any problem. Anybody else? Judy. Any impact to? The ability to do sort of off-season work, summer, spring, you know, break time work that custodial maintainers do in the building or other upgrades that might happen in the building because you guys are going to be in the building full time? In my experience, and, and I'm only coming from this model, no, we won't have carpet, so they'll be able to, um, when they go and clean a classroom, they take everything out like faster than you can imagine and, and then they wax they, they buff the floor and then they wax it i think they wax it about four or five times at least three of you guys walking on the fresh coat today so right and then the right right that, as far as with okay. the um the people that need to be doing the you know the payroll and all those things i'm assuming that they'll be working around so i mean we just i mean we'd have to build a, a clean you know, right now they'd have to do the main quarters at one point, just like they, we work all summer in our offices. So, you know, they tell us what, you know, we do it Friday, you know, we leave at noon, they do, you know, they do it after that, or they just kind of give us a heads up. You know, the main corridor, though, again, it's going to be less traffic than what the students do, so the cleaning, it may not be yearly that they're going to rebuff and redo every floor of the office. Right. Of their yeah. office or, right. I mean, it could be done once every couple of years. I mean, that'll be up to Bob and his crew to figure out what they need to do on that. I think the only the only real question will be um, the accounting folks because they need to have access to their um, their files, their bookkeeping, their especially payroll. We cannot go without payroll. Uh, however, the floors make it a lot easier too, just to be buffing those traffic areas in the room, and uh, you could do that in the evening. We also can. You know, the, the office space on a day, daily cleaning thing will be less work than, than classroom space. And we've been toying with the, you know, we, we bring our custodians who work nights to a day shift in the summer. We've been toying with the idea of waiting two or three weeks before we do that and having them clean the different office, even in the high school. Because it's a, it, it's a problem in the high school for us to clean the office during the day. So if we kind of work our schedule a little differently, it'll solve the problem. So and, and currently, nobody's going into the accounting room where the bookkeepers are and taking out everything and then shampooing those rugs every year. <laughs> um, they're not doing that now, which they would do in a, which normally you do in a high school. These rugs will be shampooed every summer. All the rugs are buffed. Nobody's doing that now where we are. So. And there won't be rugs. It will be a floor, which Katie and um, then Bill. We laid out the costs of the move pretty well, but what is this, how do we fund this, and what is the impact on the budgets going forward? Because don't we pay a portion of the mm -hmm. um, costs for the superintendent office? So the, there are so the costs of the central office get assessed between Frontier and the four union schools. Yeah. So now that piece will go away and everything will flow through the frontier assessment. So it's the same, it's just gonna go through a different vehicle. As far as how we fund this move, 
Um, we did ask our attorney today if uh, for an opinion on whether the 39,000 that remains of the 65,000 that the towns um, gave to us for central office repairs uh, could be used to move. His opinion is no, it cannot, because each town had on their warrant the purpose to re-roof <coughs> and other construction repairs at the central office building. It doesn't say anything about another central office building. So that, he's saying, could probably be reallocated, but it would have to go back onto a town warrant, which won't happen until April or May, to, uh, to free that money up. So right now, that 39000 can only be used for 219 Christian Lane. So that some of that money could be used to do the abatement work in the cellar that needs to be done. Couldn't you do a special town meeting? Well, no. that would be four special town meetings, and that's a lot of money. Probably we'll have one in the fall. Not for this issue. Bill? So how do you pay for it? Then? We don't, at this point, we don't know. So the assumption is that Bob staff that's in this building now will clean. And who, who cleans that? Mr. Marlon Ball. So what, um, is there any, any money to be saved? I mean, anything appreciable? And what we spend in maintaining that building now in terms of cleaning and so forth? Minimal. So you know you he only works part part of the year. No, no, no. The building's cleaned all year. Mr. Ball himself only works from uh, works. He's gone from October to um, to May, and then we hired we had a student that does the cleaning in the summer take over for him. But that student has graduated and is going into the service. So right now we don't have anybody. We, we've been working on what we're going to do when Mr. Ball leaves in October. So that's an issue, but the, the he only works uh, three hours, four, three days a week. So that's nine hours for the year. It's nine hours a week. How many volumes? Six. six hours. Six hours. Oh, it's two hours, three days. Two hours, three days. Okay. So it's six hours of labor a week. So and. Again, we're spending twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars to 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 stay in that building, and we. Who's <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? Anyway, sorry. Uh, so, if fiscally, um, Frontier Regional Middle High School makes sense. Fiscally, it makes sense. We do have some money um, caught at the end of the year. We'll know after we're done closing out Frontier. Um, we might be able to ask uh, for that money. Uh, Patty, if you can explain that money, EDM. EDD. Uh, so we, we're working right now to get Frontier closed for 16. Um, there is E and there should be E and D money yeah. right now. We're after we allocated money to the budget from this year. I think there's about one hundred thirty thousand dollars left, and then we'll see. Added to that will be if there's any E and D. So there'll be those funds that the Frontier School Committee could put towards this project. Free cash. What does E and D stand for? Excess and deficiency. I don't like using the word free cash. It, it, it has a bad connotation. So it's excess, and I call it excess and deficiency. That's what the DOR means, it says. So I prefer excess and deficiency over free cash. So what is the process for accessing that? The Frontier Regional would have to vote on that. The Frontier Regional Board. So it would be that your thought on how to pay. Thank you. I have, well, I don't want to say I have no thoughts, but <laughs> we can only present, you know, the superintendent and I can only present. Well, what would be your recommendation, other way to ask? I, I, I would ask, knowing that I'm very new and I'm just learning the traditions and the values of Frontier and Union 38, I've learned a lot already. I've learned that people love this place, that this is a wonderful place. Knowing all that, being the best fiscal agent I can be, I would ask you to consider allowing us to make a vote, allowing us to um, slowly but surely move to the middle high school uh, and become part of that community and save that money. Yeah. I have to ask, to ask this. I wasn't going to put anything. Can somebody explain to me what happened here? 
because we've been talking about this for a year, and this this was not even in the rearview mirror. And all of a sudden, this is God's gift to the plan. I don't know what happened. I wrote the same thing. Though. Somebody needs to tell me because it, we, we appear to be headed down a given path. Not because I come from Whaley. I could care less whether you move into Whaley or not. They've been, they've got a whole other set of problems over there with that building. But it didn't. This wasn't even like I said. Wasn't even in the rearview mirror. And all of a sudden, I went to visit Patty today and go, "This is what we're going to talk about today." I heard about it. I mean, we talked about it. We talked about it. Who's with Darius? So I'll kind of give you where, uh, as I sat through it, Marty asked me to come up with a plan this in October. And so this is not new for me. The, when she first came to me, actually before October, she asked for an idea when they were first having problems over Christian Lane about how can we move them here for a year. And so I had a little bit different plan that was a little bit of much more condensed and much more, um, you know, not, not as hospitable. Um, but so the idea that this plane has been on the back burner, but the idea was, you know, um, at this point, the, uh, the other the, the town offices opened up and that became the, mm -hmm. the best idea at that time. And then you had the whole EMS kind of back and forth and everybody waiting for that to come, to come forward. Meanwhile, the building is, over Christian Lane is not getting any better. And then there's being more and more concerns as we had in those meetings here. And so coming out of that was, okay, what does it look like at Frontier? So, so that, that's how we got there. So it has been a natural progression, except this kind of plan was kind of held back because the Wheatley one kind of took the front lead as being, the Wheatley um, town offices one took the lead as being the number one idea. And then when that kind of fell apart, um, and then Lynn really coming in saying that she doesn't like the idea of not having windows, the space isn't really optimal, um, and other points yeah, the fall apart part that I don't get. Um, yeah. How where they fall apart? How okay. they fall apart? Can Lynn I, would like that? to speak. Lynn would like to speak. Hi. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, when I spoke with Marty, Marty and I worked very closely as well on this. Um, the original cost of the uh, lease, the rent from Waitley, was five dollars a square foot. As we got closer to, um, you know firming up the plans and getting a rental agreement <coughs> or a proposed rental agreement, it went up to $8,000 eight to eight dollars a square foot, which is $20,000 a year. And it, when we talk about the difference from 5,600 square feet to 2,600 square feet, it was a very small place. When I went to see it with Marty, the thing that struck me, and this is how it might have come apart, Am I going to ask those people to leave the rooms that they have, big rooms with windows and bright, to go sit in the middle in cubbies in, in a dark, without even a ceiling, with, with really no confidentiality, and, and pay for that, and then continue to pay $20,000 a year, plus CAM, whatever that would be, um, and plus $87,000 to get everything moved in? Or do I come here as a fiscal agent with a different set of eyes, can we come here, get a bigger space, a larger space, and pay less money and uh, save the district money and still be effective and do the best job we can? So that's sort of how it changed. Um, I know at one point, had the SCEMS question not been there, there would have been 1,500 other square feet, but we still would have had to build it out. There still would have been construction costs. Uh, and it's still, again, there'd be no windows. It, it, there wouldn't be any, um, uh, in, in an environment for the bookkeepers or the accounting folks to work, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that for them. But, you know, again, I'm here to do what you need me to do, what you want me to do. I, again, the goals of, of this whole discussion were to find the most effective, uh, the, the most cost effective, the, the most, uh, comfortable solution for the most people and this is this is really where where I I felt and we had a subcommittee we had a couple of meetings after a while we all kind of came to the same agreement uh, but in the beginning Marty was looking at five dollars a square foot and it changed to eight dollars Bill so just to, um, um, we basically the building subcommittee um, which was the, the three of us uh, 
we had met with the Waitley Select Board three separate times. We had met with their representatives multiple times besides that. They were most gracious and um, it, it, just the characterization that the negotiations fell apart, I wouldn't really s say that. And they never quite, the Select Board never made an offer to us of five dollars a square foot. That was the number that was in the newspaper and had been reported publicly and until we had the first meeting with the select board, there was nobody that uh, said it's going to be higher than that. But that was sort of the initial financial calculation was that you know going to um, Sandy Lane uh, is going to be substantially less than what is paid now to maintain the building, and that it was a fisc going to be a fiscally responsible thing to do. Um, it wasn't until we had that first meeting with the select board when <clears throat> they disavowed the five dollar number uh, and then by the second and third meetings it's solidified at eight dollars um, uh, plus the common area maintenance and uh, you know they, they, they were really nice to deal with and they uh, mm -hmm. we all got the sense that they really wanted us there um, that they got the, the, the their hands. Uh, I mean, they, they couldn't really, based on the scams, they couldn't really offer us a lower price than scams, um, or give at, us more space, or give us more space, which was a whole another thing. But they wanted us there. They were, and in the beginning, and for the longest time, it looked like the number. It looked like that was going to be by far the most fiscally responsible thing to do would be to go there. Um, and mm -hmm. it, until the numbers, you know, look like it's going to be not the fiscally responsible thing to do, so and not for ideal space, also. and not for not ideal, space either. Not ideal space. Judy, can I just go back to Katie's question because I didn't really, I don't think we got the answer about how we're going to pay for it. No, right? we got the answer. We don't know. Okay, that is the answer. Mm -hmm. So, tell it. Go ahead. Well, that, yeah, we have to remember. So, what happens if? Uh, you know, we vote and say, yeah, do this, which I don't know to, to do. I think you know, nothing's perfect, but in the perfect world, it seems to make the most sense, and there's a lot of things speaking for, for doing it. Um, but what happens if, you know, the E&D is done, and there's not enough dollars for the, you know, 93? Mm -hmm. How do you manage that process then? Well, it, I, I, uh, <laughs> What's your magic, Kevin? I don't. I don't have magic. Uh, from a fine, I'm going to talk from a financial perspective. From a financial perspective, right now, we already have the monies approved to keep Christian Lane open for this fiscal year. We already know that to get the thirty-nine thousand dollars, we have to go back to town meetings. And if there's no special town meetings in all four towns then we might as well wait until April and May when they have their annual town meetings and just put it on that warrant. For the air conditioning? For, to, to release the $39,000. Oh, okay. okay. We can also, if we're, if, if we're going, if we have to go, if we have to go in that direction, then why not wait till the FY18 budget to build the budget to move? So from a financial perspective, what, why not stay at 219 Christine Lane until next June, work this year to get the monies in place and then make the changes and be in the building for fiscal year 18. From a financial perspective, that to me is what makes sense. I don't know where we're gonna find money. I can't tell the Frontier Regional School Committee to give up the existing deficiency. There's other things that need to be taken care of. We have an OPEB obligation that we're supposed to be funding. There's a lot, so it, it, there's a lot there. I think that it, from a financial perspective, we've got money to be there and stay there another year, and maybe we need to take that time and, 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 and figure out how we're gonna fund this and not plan on being here in January. I'm sorry, Lynn, but that's my financial no question, perspective. No sorry, go ahead. I can't see, Bob, uh, yeah. Bob, thank you. You know, we've got some serious problems with health and safety and what have you in that school. We had people sick, stomach problems. I don't know whether they were caused by the building or not. Uh, there's no 
elevator, the back door is chained shut, and you know, it really, we need to move forward with the timetable the superintendent has laid out. What I would like to see tonight is that we, the board, the Frontier Board, vote 25000 out of the excess and deficiency account to, to take care of the things that need to be done right away, and then in the spring, we'll put the air conditioners in. We'll go for the appropriation once we find out how much money we have left over at, at, as of June 30th. But we can take, I think we have $100,000 plus or minus in the excess and deficiency account. If we take 25000 of it and uh, sit back and wait where the rest is, I think we need to move forward. I think we're going to have suits filed and we're going to have the health people in and everybody else. Uh, I think Frontier needs the opportunity to have a discussion about this. And we haven't yeah. had that. Yeah, no, that's what we're doing. You get this, you got it sprung on you tonight. Here it is. And you want the seven, six or seven of us out of 11 that are here to make that decision. And I think that is that is completely and fundamentally wrong. Well, we can wait. That. And we can vote that the money at the September meeting bill. If you'd rather do that, we can do that. This we September. haven't had a, the 11 of us haven't had a discussion about it. Not the building itself, the E and D money, where anything else is going to go. We haven't had an opportunity to have any of that discussion yet. It said, here it is. I want to do this tonight because we need to move. And that, that, There hasn't sorry, been a lawsuit in 20 years that they've been there. I don't know how one more year is going to bring another lawsuit. They haven't been ADA compliant for 20 years. You've been serving with me a long time, Bob. You know I don't like things getting sprung on me. Oh, I, I thought and you knew is, about it, Billy. Yeah, since 10 o'clock this morning. Okay, so moving along. Anyone else have any comment? Good, Dave. Small comment. So, if I'm understanding this correctly, there's a chunk of money somewhere in the order of 30 plus or close to 40 that um, is in the collective budgets for improvements to Christian land. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if we move, we're not going to do it. And, the money was appropriated. In, let me just give you the background there, David. The money was appropriated in 2004 when the Frontier Regional Committee bought the building. They had been renting it from Waitley since the other 18 years they'd been there. In 2004, they bought the building. They went to town meeting and got $65,000 total to re-roof the building and make other improvements. Of that 65, there's still 39 thousand that was unused so when when so that kind of makes me nervous to say let's move with 25 and hope things will get done later because why haven't we already spent the 39 on the things that should have been fixed at Christian Lane in 2004 and it's 2016 and that money's still sitting there and the the repairs weren't made right okay fine but there is this money that's there supposedly for the language of repairs for central office stuff right blah blah blah, blah at Christian Lane right okay hard to imagine anybody thinking rationally would object to that money being spent on central office relocating and building out here. Correct, but we need so, to get the town's permissions in that language to do well, that. Well, okay, or as I offhand comment said, you need to talk to a different lawyer who gives you a different opinion, right? Because, but putting that aside, it seems like we should be working with the select boards to say, okay, how do we get a special town meeting to do that? Because, you know, putting it off is crazy for as we indicated for another year. And then going beyond that, it, um, so you raised the issue with air conditioners, and there's a huge part of this budget here, over half of it, almost half of air conditioners. And that's, that's the point. Like, we don't really need to put those in right away. The kids, I don't think the kids have air conditioning. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not at school. It's not I understand that's from the summer, but again, that's the whole point about building here. So they could be put in next summer or something. Well, we, we talked about it as a group. We talked about. Doing certain, feasible doing certain feasible. things now, yeah. and then April comes around where we need the 39000 We talked about doing things we need to do now, yeah. and then the air conditioning, we'll say in April or May. Mm -hmm. We talked about it as a subcommittee, how we how we could do certain things. Yeah. I mean, the we amount of money we're talking about in the collective school budgets of the five schools, you know, isn't that significant? Could you also get like a low interest or no interest loan? Has anyone checked into a loan? Well, again, that would be a vote of the Frontier Regional School Committee to take a, a loan. But you also have to have that also has to be voted by the towns who you will, will expect to pay it back. Okay, so 
point of order? It's my understanding the board can vote to incur the debt, notify the selectmen and the four towns. If they don't object, it lives. If they object, then they have to go through the town meetings. I could be wrong. Uh, don't then don't say it, Bob, because I can't run with that. Well, I'm just waiting for somebody to come back. I think that's what, but I think that's what I said is that the Frontier School Committee has the uh, authority to borrow, but they have to have the, the permission of the four towns they expect to pay back. I think I said the same thing as Mr. Decker did. But no, no, it's not permission. It's, if, if they it object, they have to if vote. They object, then if they object, they can report, then it has to go to a uh, town meeting. Okay. Um, uh, whether you go to the Sandy Lane or whether you go to Frontier, you're looking at fairly comparable upfront costs. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at doing this here, it really doesn't matter which one you go to. Um, I, I do tend to agree, in terms of talking to the select board and getting public opinion behind it, staying in place and bleeding 27 k a year it's not the answer. Uh, versus taking the 39 k that, that's set aside and, and uh, putting towards one time is a fairly easy sum to the public, I think. Yeah. Okay, um, wait a minute, but that, that money has to wait for town meeting to be okay. So that would be a, I know Conway meets in May now. Okay, so that, that, would, be, that would be an issue if they would allow a special town meeting. We don't have control over that. Right. So Darius, you were next, and then, I'm sorry, I saw a bunch of hands. So the timing on Rush, um, if you're going to, um, the reason one of the reasons we kind of like a vote plan is I got to move classrooms and it will be disruptive to the school community. So, I mean, I got smart boards that I'm holding off right now being installed. I have all the wiring that has to be done in all those rooms. If it's going to happen this year, it'd be much better for the operation of the school that I know now. Um, that being one, and the other question I have, and I don't know how the, how the budgets work, is can't Frontier Regional loan money from its within itself and say you're going to use this money now, but we're going to go out here and get that money to put it back in. You're taking a small risk, but as you, as you said, it's common sense that you can go to the town and say, we need this for the full price, but we're going to fund the upfront, the upfront costs out of our <coughs> And I don't know if that's kind of just between trick or treat, trickery in your own books, or if that's kind of a... a well, a I don't model. have any trickeries. Um, I have laws. Um, the excess and deficiency, if you, if you think about the excess and deficiency, it exists because the towns put it there. Frontier Regional School Committee is in charge of that money once it's in excess and deficiency. But if you look at the true nature of how that money got there, it came from the four towns. So that's why using excess and deficiency is a proper use to do it. I just can't say we are going to do that. Lynn can't say we're going to do that. That's the Frontier Regional Board to make that decision. A. And B, right now it's not computed for fiscal year 16. I'm going to try to get it certified early, uh, but I don't see it getting it certified so any you earlier know, than you September. We have enough excess and deficiency from the previous year to cover the, the amount of money that is sitting in the central office budget for the building, for the central office building, that we could appropriate to extend up into the amount that is already being put aside for the central office building, and then go to the towns in the spring and say, please release this money, although we've already spent it from R&D. We, we know that it's the best fiscally sound. You know, it's a little bit of risk, but I don't know. I, I don't know throwing the idea out problem. there, if you can get the beginning part of this done. Michelle, I, did you? No, no. Okay. Anybody else over there? I, oh, Trevor? I could speak. You know, uh, I, I can't say for sure, but um, I believe that there will be a um, special town meeting in Deerfield uh, this fall. So, um, if, if you know, I know there's three more towns that need to get involved and. In, I can't speak for any of them, but I do know that there'll be a, a meeting in the in the, uh, in the fall for Deerfield. So if we want to get moving that money forward. Uh, Ken? Uh, well, I just wanted to throw something out for consideration. I mean, we've got a number of questions that are unanswerable right now. We've got approximately $54,000 in costs prior to worrying about air conditioning and building which is the next summer. Uh, we've got the potential of $39,000 that can be released by the towns sometime between now and May of 2017. Um, 
we have a number of, I mean, the, the financing question is a, is a very good, very good question to ask. I'm wondering if there's a motion <coughs> that we can make this evening to proceed with one of the three options or continue the exploration of one of the three op options which can then be brought to the individual school committees or to another joint committee meeting. Uh, that allows Frontier to discuss it in their next full meeting when they've got all their members present. It allows us to bring it back to our various school committees, get some feedback quickly, and um, try and you know, get you the answers you need. But if we can give it either a thumbs up or a thumbs down to one of the three proposals this evening, then you know, they can at least begin moving forward. Darius can make his moves that he has to make, and we can begin that process. Um, I think we have a recommendation from the administration here this evening to make the move to this building. At the very least, coming out of this meeting tonight, we need to say yes or no, that makes sense. It doesn't, we don't need to say yes or no, you can make the entire move between now and December. But I think we as a group this evening can start the process by at least saying, scrap the other two ideas, or you know, let's go another year in Christian Lane. Let's do something this evening. We can sit here and debate all night long about how it's going to be funded. We're not going to solve it um, because they don't have the answers yet um, to those questions. So, you know, people are in agreement with that. That's I suggest we try and get a motion on the floor that says. And I, you know, we have a recommendation, so I, I would entertain a motion to proceed with formal plans to move the central office to Frontier Regional School. I'll give you that motion. Okay. Is it, if that happens, though, is it true that the classrooms would be moved and you can do that and you don't need a serious amount of funds to do that move that you need to do? Because you want to have that move down before September 7th. Correct. Right. So but he's got money in his budget. Does that cost money so to I relocate have, there are, that? There is some small cost. So Bob can kind right. of go into it. It's, it's, you know, it's cost that I can observe my budget for removing electrical, right. you know, some of the things that are in computer happens. labs now to make them safe, that kind of thing, um, and putting some drops in the new places. Those are all, that's that's in our regular kind of, and Bob's giving you not, our regular maintenance budget. There's nothing big. The, the largest cost of this move to us is putting an AC unit when they move the server into the new tech room, um, which would probably, you know, you know, was probably going to come in some level of cost no matter what, because the old AC unit was in the room they were going in maybe a few years earlier. So but that's going to be around $8,000. We probably also can absorb that cost, barring that nothing else breaks in the building. Okay, so you now again, would be into the spring, and we would hold off and not do that expense until the spring. Do I have a second yet? Can you read the motion again, Ken? <laughs> you expect me to remember what I said? Let me move forward with so we want to have them both yes, on the same one. With, with the proposed right. administration's plan. To a motion to approve the administration's plan to move the central office to Frontier Regional School. But are we tying the hands of the Frontier Board? Huh? Are we tying the hands of the Frontier no. Board? No. No. Don't go, Billy, please. Let's get this resolved. Mm -hmm. okay. so Should it be contingent a on a successful funding or a board? Doesn't make any difference. Funding. The quorum just left. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. We no, it didn't. We still have a quorum. We had to have seven. We had to have six. We had eight. We have eight from yes. nine. One, two, we have eight. Two. All right. I know how to count. No. I have 11, so I need six. Half of right. And, and there's so plus. I need five and a half. No, I need six. You need six. And we have six. Who's from Frontier? One, right. two, four, five. And you're three, six. four, five, six. So nobody else leaves. Bar the door. <laughs> the door so um, just on that note, we actually did discuss moving the central office to Frontier back Absolutely. in the day, and you can check the minutes of those meetings that Bob took so eloquently. Um, so it was on our agenda, and we did discuss it. We just put it aside because it seemed like 
the other one was such a good deal and Marty was so excited about it that we truly thought it was going to be locked up before the end of June and then everything happened. So that is in error that somebody thinks that we didn't discuss that because we did. Um, and we have to give that committee the right to look out for the best of the union or we'd all be there. And I think that's when, Cindy, when it really became when, when Marty decided she needed a subcommittee, the subcommittee themselves, before they even formed, said, we need to look at every possibility, right. including Frontier. Right. So that, that, just a little history on that. Lynn, did you have something? Yeah, I'm just, I, I think this is a really good plan. I'm just very uncomfortable approving it without the money. Without the money. Exactly. And just kind of assuming that it's going to be there. And then putting it on the select board saying, well, you better do it because we already voted on it. So, right. The other thing with the move is with you making that movement, that might be a good thing anyways. You know, you were saying how that was actually going to be a plus for the, the middle school. So by the, if you do that and then nothing happens, it's not like it was a bad move for the middle school. It still is a good no, move for the middle right, school. Right. So as I thought you had said in your talk, you know, instead of doing it piece by piece, you just now have to do it all at the same time. So I don't think we leave Frontier if we if it gets voted down somewhere along the line. I don't think we leave them in a bad condition. I think we leave them with something they, they could have done anyway. Right. I mean we'll spend a We'd be spending a few hundred or a few thousand dollars we wouldn't have spent because of, I mean, I do it from, there's like a command right. out of the middle of the classroom floor, the right. cap, and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, there's those kind of things that the, um, it's an impetus to create this this change as well. Because mm -hmm. I'm moving someone who's been in the classroom for 20 years, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I mean, sometimes you need a, a thing like this to make those kind of change. Um, but, yes, right. We could make the moves and if they install out, it doesn't work. And, Back into those right. Well, there has to be a solution to the problem. But that could you know? be the beginning. That's that what we we could vote that tonight to give them the right to do that, to let them go forward and do that. And then Frontier has the meeting. Everybody else has their meeting, and that's when we have the discussion with full boards to have that conversation. And then if it doesn't go forth, then no. Right. Well, but they're not I'm in a worse a place. Surprise! That there's a surprise that we're going to need money to solve the problem. Like we've talked, we talked about this problem. So, like, there shouldn't be a surprise that there was going to need to be money right. to address the problem that we knew was the problem, and we were making plans. I think it's just, I think Elaine, it's just a timing thing. Correct me, that it's just a timing thing. Right. That we, we can't go forward till we have the E and D. We can't. We action. don't want to ask the towns for something we already did. Right. It doesn't really set well. Question. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, just in terms of yeah. And one, what I understood you're saying, uh, you can sort of proceed at risk and maybe have slightly higher expenses up until the installation of the air conditioning for the servers. That's, that would be a pain point. So what's the timetable for, for making that decision? The issue is that one classroom bumping another classroom that bumps another classroom. And so the question is, where do you back up the dominoes and the bumping to not move the, the, the issue is that I moved the, I moved the um, tech classroom that's across the hall that would become a seventh grade English classroom into the high school. And when I moved them into the high school, I bumped out, which I was going to move the tech, um, the tech guys with the, the computers. I moved them out because all the drops are in there. It was a lot cheaper to move in a room where they could all have, I have you know, 30 drops to have computer stations. And so I'm moving them to the room next door. The room, that, the room next door does not have AC. So the question is, I get to ask if they can store the server in a classroom or in another space until that point, because right now I believe it's in the back room right behind Craig where Karen's sitting. Um, so they were going to move that over so it's successful. <coughs> so they could probably hold off on the AC in that room for this year, mm -hmm. is, my, is my guess. No, because when we come over, our server's going to go in. Well, once you come over, we're, we're, we're yeah, going to go We have the money because you're coming. Exactly. So, so that kind of thing. And I'm just saying, we have the money. Frontier probably has the money for it either way. But to do a needless expense, I think we could hold off on that. Um, but I kind of have to have like the. I guess it, we're going to be here saying the kind of the goodwill. This is the direction we're going, and then future meetings we'll figure out the ones we want to right. I mean, Mr. Carmack makes a good point that if we if we make the move 
without the air conditioning, and we get the towns on the town warrant, in which I'll have the April and May to release that thirty-nine thousand. That thirty-nine thousand pays for the air conditioning, and it can be done. Come in, but usually meet on Tuesday. Right, the fifty-four thousand, which Frontier is going to have to address. And the ductless so, systems are much easier to put in yes. than the old. <coughs> Did you say Frontier has money in this A and D? D and D. D and D, but that's the money they have that they just need to vote. Right. But we haven't had a full meeting to vote. It is what part of Bill's process. process. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a process. process. When's the next meeting for that? September. Not until September. September, September 13th. I'm suggesting this yeah. evening a, a vote. Yeah. And, and probably we should amend the motion that I had asked for and say pending final approval of $95,000 in financing for the project. Some not to exceed $95,000 for the project. Get that built, Bob? You know, every, you know, everybody comes up with situations where you have to pay for something, right? Everybody, you, me, you find a way to get the money. You don't say, oh, geez, you know, I, you find a way to get the money. There's, we, granted, as Frontier, we haven't looked at, We'll call it free cash or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But there's there's ways that we can take a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and a little bit to do this, to go forward with this. Patty's looking at the, the financial thing, waiting a whole year. Personally, I'm not ready to wait a whole year. The three of us spent a lot of time with Marty Baird before Lynn took it over. We went through, we can't tell you how many meetings we had. John Robleski came and helped us a lot at Whaley, a lot. If, if if Deerfield didn't drag your feet and bully us back in January, we would probably have this done and they would, we would have moved in there already. Would have been perfect. We probably would have found it was a lot smaller, but we would have been there already. But since we had to wait for Deerfield on their town meeting, which got put forward back and stuff, we got bullied again. So this is what we came up with. Darius was great to come forward. Hey, this is what we can do for you. And I, you know, I applaud him for what he did for us. It was a little bit less at the beginning when he was able to shuffle certain things. He gave us pretty much the square footage that we really needed. See, but and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that we should wait a week. I, I mean a year. I'm just saying from a financial perspective yes. and good planning. I mean, I have to be conservative and say. But we have been talking about this. <laughs> Marty has been talking to our administration and Waitley, the old administrator, since last October. We've known something about this since last De November, December. This is not a surprise that Billy's saying, he's surprised that he found out today. It's not a surprise. No, this is not a surprise to anybody. Can we? I have to be out of here in 15 minutes. And if you need votes, <laughs> that's my union, the, so the union has a motion and a second. And are you are you trying to? There was, an, there was an amendment to the motion. I'll give you oh, the no, motion. there was a, like a suggestion. All right, all right, all right. So I'll give you the motion for the amendment also. Like, <laughs> I'm tight on this. I got 15 minutes. So if you need a vote, let's do it. You have five minutes to speak to the motion if you want to. I, you, look, you can have my five minutes. <coughs> so can we just have a reading of the motion, the yeah. amended motion? We have a motion, no, we did not amend it. <laughs> a motion to approve the recommendation to move the central office to the Frontier Regional School. Okay, so that doesn't have a date, that doesn't, that pretty much leaves it open? That sounds good? The recommendation, the recommendation is it has a December. So we have a first and a second, do we want to? We have a motion and a second, so for the union, we'll now take a vote, there's no okay. debate. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? So we have a unanimous vote from the union. Okay, so um, can I have a motion from Frontier? So moved. Can I have a second? I'll second. Both committee members. Yes. Um, any other discussion from Frontier? We are going to, it's going to be a long meeting in September. <laughs> Bring your slippers. Anything else? Okay, hearing not, all those in favor? Three. Opposed? There was another opposed? I, I think Judy. Yes. No, no, Judy was in favor. Oh, four. Lynn, just five to one. Five to one. 
you got to record it uh, down because it's a proportional vote. I uh, no, actually, in I think in joint meetings, it's everybody gets a vote. No, no, but but it's a frontier vote. We're good. To cover ourselves, all right. Well, good. Uh, Bill, Bob, I will calculate that. Can, so can I just so? Uh, do we have to go back to that? Do we no, that? I'm not 100% sure. I know in executive session you have to vote to go into it by percentages, but once you're in there, everybody gets a so vote. Six, we're six and but one on Frontier, right? We're fine because it's Lynn, and Lynn is not the representative. Oh, because it's Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn is a full Excuse member me. of the Frontier Board. Excuse right. me, no oh, apologies needed Lynn because it's on tape. Lynn's on the Frontier Board. Sorry. Wave to the camera. Um, <laughs> but you're not, you're not a... Even she's if she was one, it doesn't matter. She's not appointed. She's not appointed. She's not, she doesn't she's have a full vote. She doesn't have a full vote. So we're good. Right? Yeah, we're good. Bill's guy is the one. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're not good. the lawyer. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Madam Chairman? Yes, sir. Good. Good. Uh, you place it on the agenda for the September 13th meeting that we get a full report as to the financial status of the Frontier Regional School District? That's not feasible. What's the need to get a report every basis? Yeah, we don't understand the request. Well, we not. want to know what, what, what the E&D you know, balance That's is what we get and anyways. what the, what the free cash is. Oh, okay. The end of the year, June 30th. That's what I'm saying. We haven't got a June 30th statement yet. I can tell you that we will discuss this in September. You will not have a full account. Their E and D does not get certified until after September 30th. So we won't have a full, but we'll have as much as the whatever is feasible to get. As much as we can get. Well, you know what? She gives us as much as she can give us anyway. So that's kind of. Is there another vote? So moving forward. Yeah, we got a sex discrimination. We have policy ACAB sexual harassment and ACA non discrimination on the basis of sex, and I will turn that back over to the superintendent. We, uh, Marty Barrett, um, did a wonderful job. I'd like that on record. She did an excellent job in many ways. She owes you cookies for that. I know. So. Well, she's done a wonderful job. She literally tied up the district in a bow and put it in my lap, with the exception of the fact that we need to move and we have these two choices. <laughs> and I did the best I could from there. But she went through all these policies, and these policies are really well done. We're excited. The um, Mass Association of School Boards or the Mass School Board Association, we're going to have links. It's going to be great. However, there's two of these, um, two of these uh, policies that state the school committee will designate an individual to act as the local school system's Title IX compliance officer. The question before the committees tonight is uh, we're wondering if we should change that wording to be the superintendent will designate an individual to act rather than the committee. Um, it would have to be the, uh, the, the full committees uh, to designate an individual. What we would like to do is actually um, uh, have the superintendent designate that person. We should motion to change the language of the uh, existing policy to yes. say superintendent to. Correct. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, I can't have you second. Second. Somebody else. Second. Sorry. Any discussion from Frontier? All those in favor? Only problems in the bathroom. Sorry. We don't have a he said vote yes for him. Before he left. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Do, the, did. do the union vote. Did. Do the okay. union vote. We will the pause and. I'll, I'll entertain a motion from the union There's to never a dull moment here. Insert the super the, insert the language the superintendent will designate an, designate an individual to act as the school system. So moved. Second. Bill. Bill. Trevor. And uh, policy ACAB. Uh, it's federal law that we, that every uh, school system have a Title IX. Title IX is discrimination, and uh, somebody needs to be 
uh, monitoring that the oh as opposed to the committee the superintendent um, the uh, the reason why we're asking that is because as a superintendent I, I could ask different employees I could ask employees we could change it every year um, there's a certain amount of uh, trust and knowledge that goes into who you're asking the committee can certainly pick um, but with different I think vendors. It's out of our what, I, I'm not disagreeing I'm just wondering like what, how did the original language in terms of having the committee will designate was that like did that come from how it's the state presented that yeah. originally well no I think it was what just happened Doug when we redid all the policies I think the language but said just, school committee instead yeah. when we just redid all the policies I think they missed that piece the, state. the original language as I understand it was suggested this way then came the realization after the fact with Marty and Donna that people didn't realize that this was necessarily happening annually right. and there's the timing of it they've got yeah. staff leaving in June they don't know what their staffing is for September they need to figure out who to appoint so you've got to get the committee to vote on it you don't know when you're going to vote you're not going to have the resource officer in place by September if you're not sure of staffing in June so the, the thought was change it so that the superintendent does the appointment the review of other districts in the area most of them have the superintendent and answer your question yeah and I guess obviously we don't know of any reason that the state uh, would have a preference in this. Um, actually if you read your apps um, I, I, did you get this from the lawyer Donna included it. Well, no, it isn't. It isn't. Okay. But I get to I what mean, you're I, saying. I, 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 I'm sure I would ask who you. If it, if it was our responsibility, I would say who would you recommend? Because you're, you know, you said the personnel. Uh, we wouldn't. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just asking as a committee member, you know, was there a reason that the, that we have that the, the, the committee should be doing it rather than the superintendent that there's, you know, that, that I don't, I, I don't know why I as a school committee member would be appointing a federal line compliance officer from more the guess, staffing of the school. More that, that there was a reason that it was considered that the superintendent I think more what he said in the beginning was that it has to be done every year and it has to be done by a certain time. So if people are leaving and you're not sure, then they would have that kind of lined up in August, but we don't have a meeting in August. And then we would have to get all that kind of information. So to give it over to them, and we can vote annually to vote on it like we do school choice if we want. But I, I just do not have us have that kind of decision to make based on people's personalities and that type of stuff that we don't have pri privileged information to. So, I think you said we might I have four minutes, minutes before asking. Well, then, can, can, I, so can, I just, votes? can I just sure. add to, to answer, Go Doug, ahead. that the reason it's the school committee is because one of the complaints could be against the superintendent. That's true. Well, right, that's part of it. Why so I'm that's why the why original would, language says why school it committee. Would be Anybody else? Any yeah. Questions? Oh, sorry. Well, uh, Mike Gilbert from the uh, School Committee Association says, I always recommend the committee appoint two grievance officers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, That's ACA. Uh, I don't have any preference one way or the other. Well, we needed your vote already. I think we already have a, mo a motion. We have a motion session. at the union level for okay. just approving the superintendent. We can take up the issue of male and female. So do we have a vote? Oh, are we doing them both at the same yeah. time? Because sure. ACAB would be the one where you would want to. That would be your grievance officer. Well, we, they're, they're on the agenda separately, so let's, let's deal okay. with the motion we have on, on the first one. Mm -hmm. What were you doing? We have a motion on the second. Yeah, there's two different files. I'm on ACA right it's now. It's a grievance oh, okay. officer. So are we voting? Yes. Okay. All in favor? ACA. Uh, this is a 
opposition is against unanimous LCS 10 Okay, so Frontier will pick up where it left off. It had a motion for ACA, it had a second, and we were voting, but somebody was out of the room. So all those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. And is there one more? Yeah. What well, one more? ACAB. Okay. So this be the same thing on ACAB. Yeah. Go ahead. No. This is where you where we would want for the grievance officer. We would want one male and one female, uh, so that people would be comfortable. And again, the committee can annually appoint um, a sexual harassment grievance officer, or the superintendent can appoint. Um, uh, and and so we're um, we. Uh, we're requesting that it be the superintendent. Motion to delegate this to the superintendent. Second. And, um, I guess we're doing a motion frontier. for Frontier. <laughs> Did you, are you recommending, Lynn, that you appoint a male and female? Yes, I am. So you want that in the motion as well? Yes, I would. The superintendent approves a male and female. Mm -hmm. I thought that was on the first one. No, so that was. Harassment grievance officer. The first one's Title IX, just to monitor that we are, we're doing. Um, Any other Sorry, discussion for Frontier? I, I know you have to leave, but we can't no, just I, go I, over these I and gotta, say, let's I just gotta, do it. It sounds like our town meeting and everything is crammed into the last five forum, minutes. And I got to get to a vote. Okay. Well, so, so, we'll have a um, forum if you leave. We have, so, right, okay. we have a motion from Frontier. We have a second from Frontier. Does anyone have any other discussion for Frontier? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Elaine. No problem. No, she just has to leave. Oh. Say goodbye. Uh, Union 38, a motion to amend policy ACAB as recommended to have a superintendent appoint a male and female uh, sexual harassment grievance officer. So moved. Second. Trevor and um, all, any further discussion? Hearing, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Unanimous again. Thank you. Um, Frontier, um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Maybe. Thank you, everyone. Union. And reading 38 motion. Any opposed for union? No, we want to stay here all night. Thank you, union. Thank you all for and we're done. Taking time on the